Welcome to Unreal Engine 5 basics tutorial on setting up lights. In this video, we will explore the fundamentals of lightning in Unreal Engine 5 and learn how to create stunning visual effects to enhance your project. Lighting plays a crucial role in creating immersive and realistic game environments. And mastering the basics of lightning will give you this extra polishing that your game need. We're going to cover all the basics of lighting and in the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I lit up this Star Wars scene. So let's get started. If you watched my previous video, you already know that my channel is demonetized. So I've decided to switch to Patreon. Becoming a Patreon member, you'll support me and this channel to keep evolving, to keep creating more and more interesting videos. Besides that, you have access to all the files that I've created from the start of my YouTube channel. So right now you can download the water shader, you can download the auto material from my previous video. If you didn't watch it, go and watch it. And you can have access to more in-depth videos about how the things work, like the auto material, the water shader, and a few more videos. And also you will have access to a VIP Discord server only dedicated to my Patreon members, where I am active most of the time. So if you want to support the growth of this channel, and if you want to see more and more videos like this, Go to my Patreon page, enroll now, and also you will have access to everything that I'm creating. Thanks everyone. So the first steps that we need to take is we need to set up our project to use Lumen. How to do that? Go to Edit, Project Settings, scroll all the way down here in the Engine section, and click on Rendering. After you click on Rendering, here you can find all the settings for each light situation. For example, here are the settings for the mobile. So if you are developing a mobile game, here you can find the mobile shading. This is the forward shading. This is the first shading. However, we need to scroll all the way down. And here for the dynamic global illumination method, we need to select Lumen. So when you create a new fresh project using Unreal Engine 5, Lumen will be selected by default, but if you are migrating your project from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, this won't be selected as default. So you need to go here under Global Illumination and select Lumen. The next one is the Reflection method. You should also select the Lumen. If you have a video card which is from the RTX series, that means that your video card is supporting hardware ray tracing. So if you have an RTX card, just click here on use hardware ray tracing when available. So it will use the hardware RTX to create more detailed shadows and reflections. Then for the ray light mode, you need to select surface cache. And the final settings is you can enable the ray trace shadows as ray trace shadows will give you extra detail and softness in your shadows. After we set up all those settings, we need to restart our Unreal Engine and start with Lightning Basics. All right, before we deep dive into each lightning, I want to dedicate this part for the settings that you need in order for you to have this good lighting. And I'm going to explain a few of the basic settings of the light. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to add a post process to your scene. So go over here, add a post process, drag it onto your level and few settings that you need to set up here. The first one is you need to search for infinite bound. So infinite and this one, infinite extent unbound, you need to check it. Then we're going to search for exposure. And in this exposure, we need to set up the min EV 100 and the max EV 100 to one. We are setting those to ones because we want to have an even lightning across our complete scene without any burn effects. Turn the first one. Check the second one and set up one, one. All right. So those are the basic settings that you need to set up for your post process in order to have this nice, realistic lightning all across your scene. The next step, let's start creating our first light and let me explain you the basic settings of it. So go over here, click on light and let's create a point light. So in this point light, let me explain the basic settings. The first one is the intensity. From here, you can set up the intensity of the light. Right now is eight, but if you tweak it up all the way up, you can see that your light is getting stronger and stronger. From here, you have different intensity units. You can use candleless, you can use unitless, you can use lumens or EV. Depend on your preferences, you can set up different intensity units. So let's work with lumens right now. The next step is the light color. From here, you can select different type of color to so your light. And after you are satisfied with your color, click OK. Next one is attenuation radius. From here, you can set up 
how far the light will affect your scene. Keep in mind that bigger attenuation radius will cause more performance into your scene. Then we go to the source radius. This is the radius of the light itself, of the emitter of the light. So when you bump up the source radius, you can see that all this yellow sphere we are start to emitting in the radius of the sphere you have bigger source radius you have bigger higher intensity for emitting and by increasing the source radius you can see that we are killing here the shadows because we are emitting too much light and the shadows are not compensating from here then the next one is our soft source radius you can see here on the floor refraction so if we want to have a softer radius we can increase it from here and you can see by increasing our radius, we're softening the emitting of the light through our scene. Right now, it's pretty much focused over here in this area. And if we bump it up, you can see that we are washing it away. And also you can see it on the cube here. This cube is reflecting from our light. Here we have very sharp soft source radius, which is zero. But if we start tuning it up, we are just softening it out. So if you want to have a little bit softness in your radius of the light, this is the settings that you want to do. The next one is the source length. What you can do by increasing the source radius, you can create different cone shape forms. Right now we are creating this kind of source length. What else you can do, you can turn it all the way around like that. And as you can see, we have this kind of roof lamp in offices that you can simulate. And by increasing it and decreasing it, I'm just changing the shape of the source length. All right. The next parameter for our light is use temperature. You can also use temperature and not color. Here you can increase it to have cool white or go all the way down to have this warm light. So if you want not to use color, just make it white over here and start working with the temperature itself. The next setting is to cast a shadow. If you don't want to cast those shadows, just turn it off and no shadows will be represented in your scene. So for example, if you want to fill a little bit an object with just a little color of light, you can turn off the shadows if you don't want to use the shadows in this particular light. The next one is the indirect light intensity. Let me show you what this does. If I move the shadow over here and a little bit like that. So if I start boosting the indirect light intensity, the indirect spots, this one, and those sides of the cube that are not directly lit up by this point light will start to have a little bit more light information in them. So let me start tuning up and you can see how we are increasing the light information there. So all the spots that are not directly influenced by the light, you can use this indirect light information. The next one is the volumetric scattering intensity. This scattering intensity works with fog. So later on, I'm going to show you when we start using fog. Now, if we scroll all the way down here in the rendering settings, you can say, is this light visible or invisible? So you can turn it on and off through this parameter in your scene. For example, through a blueprint, if you want to lit up a room or something, you can enable the visibility and disable the visibility. And the other things that I want to show you is the advanced panel. So if I open the advanced panel over here, we have additional light parameters that we can tweak up. I'm going to show you the most important that I use. The first one is the specular scale. For example, if we are arranging some lights in our scene, and if this light is using a lot of specularity in our scene, for example, this cube has the specular amount of 100 so it reflects 100 percent and here on the floor you see this specularity in our tiles and if you don't want this light to affect the specularity of your object you can go here in the specular scale and start tweaking it all the way down so right now we have less specularity in our object that are reflecting and if you want to disable it, you can disable it completely by setting up to zero. So if you want this additional parameter to control only for this white, for example, if we have different lights and I want this light to affect like 0.4 and I want this light don't affect, you can set it up like this. All right. So this is pretty nice parameter to set up. And the final settings that I want to show you is pretty important and it is the lighting channels. So in the lighting channels right now, this light is affecting channel zero. If I start affecting channel one and disable it, all my objects here are on channel zero. So nothing is affected by our light. Okay. So if I want this cube to be affected only by this light, 
I'm going to scroll all the way down and select channel 1. And here, as you can see, only this cube is affected by our light. And right now, the other surfaces is bouncing and getting global illumination information from this one. But if I start moving, you can see that only this cube is affected by our light. So if you want to have this specific case where you want to affect different objects only by this light, you can set it up by choosing the channel for the light and the channel for the object over here in the lighting channels. So by setting up those, you can connect this light to this object and only affect this cube. So those are the basics that I want to show you here before we deep dive into each light type and go further. But before we continue with this video, let me introduce you to today's sponsor of this video, which is Outlux. Outlux is a breakthrough plugin for Unreal Engine that helps artists produce hyper-realistic 3D showcase renders with ease. Outlooks in its core is a digital twin photo studio containing highly realistic lightning assets, camera animation presets, and a streamlined one-click render interface. It is the perfect gateway solution for 3D artists looking to leverage Unreal's ray tracing power without getting bugged down by technical details. For example, when you create lightning setup in Maya, Max, or Blender, it takes a lot of time to set it up. Here with Outlooks plugin for Unreal Engine 5, it happens in just under 90 seconds. So let me show you how easy it is to set up a quick rendering scene. Now I'm going to show you how quickly you can set up a scene to render your 3D mesh. Go to Outlooks. I'm going to use an AI randomizer. I'm going to click a few times on it. And let's say I like this setup. Then I'm going to go to my outliner. I'm going to delete this 3D element. And I have downloaded a Roman statue from Quixel Megascans. I'm going to move it in the center of my turntable. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so it can face up the camera. Then I'm going to select to be movable so it can rotate with the turntable. I'm going to move it under the Outlooks platform so it can be a child of it. I'm going to select the Outlooks platform. I'm going to choose turntable. The duration will be 6 seconds and I want it to rotate on 360 degree. So my setup is ready but I also want to add a little light on the right side. So I'm going to go to my lightning. I'm going to select a salt box 30 by 120 and I'm just going to move it a little bit like that because I want to feel a little bit from the side of my statue. All right. So the next step is to set up my camera. Right now I'm just focusing on the middle of the statue. I'm just going to push it a little bit back and right now my camera target is Outlook's target 2. So I'm going to go to my outliner, select the target and move it a little bit down. But right now I cannot see how the camera is viewing so I'm just gonna pin it over here select the target and start moving it all the way like that okay so I'm just gonna select again my camera move it a little bit back and this is the angle that I want to shoot from then I'm gonna jump to the render settings then I'm gonna select Rio. I'm not going to render in production because it's gonna take too much time. I'm gonna choose sequence. For the frames, I'm gonna select 300 because you have 60 frames per second and the rotation is five seconds. So I'm gonna multiply five by 60. I'm choosing my output pad. The resolution is 1080p. The quality is ultra. I've enabled the path tracing and I'm gonna render straight to dot .mov. I'm gonna turn on the denoiser and then what I need to do is just click shoot and it will start rendering my frames. This is the final render and the quality is super good. So let me show you how you can use Outlooks. The first step that you need to take after installing Outlooks is go to Edit, Plugins and enable the Outlooks plugin. So search for Outlooks and enable the plugin from this check mark. Then you need to restart your Unreal Engine 5. After you restart your Unreal Engine 5, you have a new button over here, which is the Open Outlooks interface, or you can access it over here from the dropdown and selecting Outlooks. There is also a shortcut, which is Shift plus 9. After you open the Outlooks interface, you need to log in with your credentials and you have four tabs. The first tab is Studio. The second tab is about Lightning. The third tab is about Sequence and the fourth tab is about Rendering. So let's take a look at each tab. In the Studio tab, you can find different already made up presets. So the first one is Photo Studio. So if you just click on it, Outworks will automatically create a Photo Studio for you. And just by clicking one button, the Photo Studio is created. You have your lights over here as a setup. You also have your camera over here set up. 
and a placeholder for the object that you want to shoot. Then you have a light box, you have a turntable, which is a 36 degree of an object already set up for you. You have a reveal animation, you have glide, you have mist and so on. Here at the glide object, you have rails over here on which the camera will be moving. So if you want to create a movement of the camera, you can create different type of rails. You can place them onto your scene. For example, if I select this curve, I can move it a little bit down. So my camera will follow the rails from the start point to the end point and make an animation sequence out of it. You also have a ready to use setup for character shooting and it is called meta portrait so here you can place up your meta character and just shoot it from close up and get this nice and crispy details and the final interesting preset is you have an AI random generator which will generate different kind of light setup for your scene so if you don't have an idea for exact lighting setup the AI will help you out so when you click once on this it will start to set up a different kind of scene so if this one is not on my taste I will just simply click one more time and the AI will generate a new scene so let me show you you have this scene I don't like it, click again. The AI will keep generating different and different kind of scenes every time you click it. Keep clicking the AI button until you have something that you like and then you can tweak it up on the go. Also, you have the ability to create your own presets, name them and save them. Up here on the top, you can find assets. The first asset is just a simple setup of a studio. Then you have a psychorama, you have a dome, you have a room, you have ceiling rail system and you have a rotating platform. Let me show you pretty quickly how the scene is set up. So right now we have three different type of lights. Let me select this light. And this is our Outlooks softbox. Over here from the drop down, you can select different light types. Right now I have this 50X 70 South box, but if I want 30X 120, I can just select this one and the light will just change itself to the new light type. You can select ring light, spotlight, light wand, etc. So if I select spotlight, for example, it will create this spotlight for me. If I want a uh, ring light, I'm just going to select it and I'm going to have ring light. So you can tweak up your lights from over here. You can change different light types. So from here, you control the intensity of the light. Also, the light can be controlled by using the temp temperature. So you can make it warm or you can make it cooler. The tint itself is working for the color of the light, so I can change the color to green from this one. You can choose also a support. Right now it's automatic, which is a tripod for me, but you can choose scissors or none. So if I choose scissors, it will start connecting to my railing system. And if I start moving, you can see that in real time it is updating onto my railing system. You can also choose to hide the mesh if this lamp, for example, is behind our object that we are going to render. You can click over here, mesh hidden in render. So this will hide the lamp in the render, but still it will give this lightning that you need on the back of your surface. And the final thing that is super important is the actor to track. This is defining which actor this light will track. So if I start moving my light, you can see that right now it is focused on this object. And where I move my light, it doesn't matter because it will always focus on the object and it will always lit up my object over here. But if I select this eyedropper and I select my camera, right now my light will face the camera over here. And if I move my light, you can see that the light is just leading up my camera. So from the eyedropper, you can define which object this light should be focusing on. Also, you can use the drop down to select the object that you want to focus on. You can pretty much do the same for the camera. Right now, the camera is targeting our object over here. And if we start moving, the camera will keep focusing on this object. But you can change the focus again from the eyedropper. And I'm picking right now the light and my camera will focus only onto my light. And here in the lighting tab, you have few settings. First, you have a lighting presets, just like the studio presets, but those presets are working only for the light. So if I click on good side, it will automatically add my lighting over here. If you want to have a force, you have this light and you can start working with it. And from here, you can add different type of lights from the assets. Here is overhead light blank. You can just drag and drop it here. It is again facing the object that we want. So you can lay it up from here. You can add a softbox. You can have a different softbox. You can have 30 by 120. You can add an area light if you want so. And everything is facing our object over here. 
And the final one is a target, which is just a helper to target on. So if I select my light over here, and from the eyedropper, I select this target. Right now, my light will face this target, and I can start moving this target and not the object and fix a point on my object that I want to target. This is helpful for the light. This is also helpful for your camera. You can easily switch by ray trace, lumen, and path tracing. Just click on ray tracing. And right now, I'm working with ray tracing. If I click on lumen, I will enable lumen right now and my light will work with lumen and if you want to enable the path tracer just click here on the path tracer and it will start working with the path tracer it is simple and easy as that and right now my path tracer is working and rendering the scene in the second step you have different type of cameras so right now in this scene we have dslr but you can add 360 camera you can add again a target you can add a ring rail from here you can select different ring rail presets just select your camera and start clicking on the ring rail presets and this preset will automatically add it to your camera so if you want a semi circular you can add it over here if you want a full circle maybe a roller coaster here you have additional settings for the rail system and then we go all the way down to the level sequencer how this work is let's create a new sequence we want the total frames of movement of this camera to be 180. We want to shoot in 60 FPS. Then you have the rail interpolation. How do you want the movement to be? You want to break it. You want to have a linear movement, constant or smart auto. Select your type of interpolation. Then click on prepare level sequence. After you click it, your level sequencer is ready. And then you can click play and see your animation created just with one click. So let's hit play. And you can see the movement of my camera and the final tab is your rendering tab here in the rendering tab you can select quick render real or production so if you are just testing your shot you can use quick and just render it out pretty quickly to see how it looks but for your final rendering you can use the production also if you want to shoot just a single frame just select a single shoot and not a sequencer so it will render out one frame but if you want to create a video clip use sequencer and define your total frames of the animation from the drop down over here you can select different resolutions you can use all the way up to 8k or you can use a custom resolution if you need a specific different resolution here we have different presets for the quality medium high ultra or apex apex is the highest quality but it will take significant time to render depending on your machine you can also enable the path trace rendering you can choose between file formats you can export in png jpeg exr or straight into MOV. you can use the noiser motion blur also one additional thing that is pretty good is you can warm up the engine this is pretty useful for particles so if you add a few particles over here inside your scene and if you want to warm them up here you can define how many frames it will warm up before start shooting your scene also you have ability to have a custom batch events or batch options. You can learn more about the plugin at atlooks.ai. And here you can get more information about how this plugin is working. You can see the samples. The plugin is great for industrial design, architecture, 3D, gaming, fashion, automotive, and everything that you can imagine. So if you want to grab a license, click on get a license. And right now Outlooks is on sale, so you can grab it by paying monthly, $14.75, or you can get one year license for 280 bucks so let's continue on with our video let's continue on by reviewing each light and show you how they works the first light that i want to talk about is the directional light and as you can see here in my scene i already have my post process volume i've set up the infinite bound and the exposure so how to create your directional light go over here go to light and choose directional light and the directional light is pretty self-explanatory. This is acting like a sun and it have this little sun icon. So right now, our directional light is shining through our right over here and it's getting to an angle maybe around 60 degrees over here. And you can see here, we have these nice shadows. If I start rotating it, we can create different shadows and this is working like a day and night cycle. So if we go all the way up like that, we're going into night. And then if we go all the way like that, we have sunrise, we have midday, and we're doing this cycle all over again. And here in the reflection, you can see how it is representing like the sun over here. 
So the directional light is working like that. This is your base lightning. If you are creating an open world, you need to have this kind of sun in your open world. And if you are creating an indoor scene, when you need to have a little bit lighting to a window, for example, with some god rays, you can use this or you can fake it with other type of lighting that we are going to cover. But for outdoor scenes, use this directional light. And for indoor scenes where you have a lot of windows, for example, you can use also this directional light but for closed indoor scenes i recommend using and arranging different type of lighting and one more thing that i want to share with you is here you have three different options you have static stationary and movable movable is real-time light so it can be moved around in real time in your game and if you use the static and stationary the static is lighting that needs to be baked and this is common light use for games so you can bake different lighting into your mesh to have better performance and right now you have this message that you need to rebuild and bake your lightning so in general directional light is used as a sunlight and of course you can use the color you can use the temperature let's make it a little bit warm over here another useful thing for the directional light is when you use fog you can turn on the light shaft occlusion and light shaft bloom i'm going to show this a little bit later but those settings are used to mimic and create god rays for example from windows or through the branches of this tree here is a little example of how it will look and i'm going to show you a little bit later how you can set it up but basically this is the idea to create gold rays through different meshes. And this is pretty much about the directional light. So let's move to the next one. The next one that we are going to cover is our point light. So go here, go to lights and create a point light. And this is simply like a light bulb as the icon itself says. And it spreads light over here. And I've already shown you a few of the settings and the most use cases for this Point light is when you have some static objects like a light on your street, like a light bulb, maybe uh, some fire torch, etc. And it emits light in radius. And you can tweak the settings from the intensity, from the light color. You can use temperature to create different kind of mood and tweak all the settings that I've already shown you previously. This is one of my favorite lights to use across my games. Moving further is our spotlight. So I'm going to delete our point light and I'm going to create a spotlight. And this is simply like a projector. As you can see, it is creating a light based on a cone. And this is super handy for that type of lightning when you want to create some projector lightning or let's say a car headlights here for example if we have a car and we can set up two headlights over here and this is how you can set up your car headlights you can set up the rotation so it can emit light further also there are a few settings that you can tweak here in the spotlight let me just boost up a little bit the intensity and here you have the inner cone from which it starts emitting. And from here you can create this hard edge over here or you can soften it out. If your inner cone is less than your outer cone, it will have this soft transition between the inner and the outer. But if you want to have this pretty hard shadow over here, just have the same values for the inner and for the outer, and you're gonna have this pretty nice and very strong and sharp shadow if you need that for your game. And just by tweaking out the outer corner, it will automatically tweak out the inner corner. And you can set up here a light that you can see in the stage shows for example if my tree and my table over here are the center uh, or you're creating a, let's say a comic over here which is telling the jokes etc this is how you can do it by setting up the inner and the outer corner at the same radius and if you want to have again the soft shadows over here just tweak up the inner corner and the outer corner let's move to the next one which is the rec light so let's go here and create our rec light so the rec light is like a light in a photo studio that you can create it creates this 
pretty much very soft shadows. Let me boost up a little bit the intensity so you can see. It creates those soft shadows that you can use. This is also one of my favorite lights with the point light. With those rec lights, you can create different kind of lightning across your scene. You can create interior lightning or you can set up a photography studio based on this lightning. Let's say if this is something like a soft box, you can create two or three of those. Also, you can control the source width and height. Let me show you how this works. If we start controlling the width, you can see also the shadow, how they're starting to soften out a little more. And here in the reflection, you can see the representation of this rec light. And it looks like a rectangle softbox. And you can do it like that. And you can lit up from above, for example. Let me just move it like that. And you can see pretty soft shadows. It is a little bit different than the point light. The point light is making more hard shadows. Also, you can tweak up the length over here. So if I tweak up this, this will decrease the length. I can increase the length over here. You can decrease this. So you can create this kind of, uh, which is concentrated in just this rectangle. Let's say we have an interior lightning and we just need to let up something like this or you want to make some dramatic scenes. You can use this, the barn door angle and the barn door length in order for you to create this kind of lightning over here. All right, so rec light is also very useful for games and you can also control all the parameters, the temperature, the source width, the radius over here and the intensity. And there is one more, which is a skylight, but I'm going to cover this later on in this video when we recreate and lit up our scene. And there is one more light that I can show you. You need to go to edit plugins and search for HDR and enable this HDR plugin and reset your Unreal Engine. After you restart your Unreal Engine, let's create this HDR. So go over here, lights, HDR backdrop. And when you create it, you can see here you have an HDR dome. So if I zoom out, you can see here our HDR dome is ready. And if I zoom over here, you can see that our objects are black. And this is because our HDR is too big compared to our level. So I will select the HDR backdrop and I'm going to put the scale of 0.05. And as you can see, when I scale it up, I have this pretty nice lightning and this is very common to use HDR in your games. Let me show in our current game that we are developing in Unity how I set up the HDR for mobile. So here in this simple level, this is for a mobile game. I've set up the HDR over here, the dome, which normals are facing inside. And this HDR is contributing to my lightning over here, which the lightning is baked. And also this HDR is captured and is working for my reflections over here. So HDR is pretty important to use in mobile games and in any PC games. This HDR is set up manually in Unity in order to have pretty good optimization. But here in Unreal Engine, you can have it out of the box or you can also simply create it by using a sphere in any 3D program like Blender, Maya or Max. Set it up into your scene, reverse the normals to face inside your scene and then use this HDR as a fill for your scene, for the sky and for the horizon and use this HDR also to have reflections. As you can already see over here, we have good reflections through our surface over here through the HDR. So HDR is pretty important for game development and those are the two ways that you can create the HDR using the default HDRs over here by creating a cube map or setting up a custom like I did here through a 3D application in your game engine. You can set up the size from here, not from the scale. Let's say, let's set up a size of 50, of 30. Also, you can set up the intensity. You can boost it up all the way to three, to one. This is working like a field light in your scene and combining the HDR with a directional light for getting the shadows will work pretty fine for your game. Now, the next one that I want to show you is how you can create an emissive lightning. And this is pretty common also in games to create an object that emits lights. So let me just duplicate this cube. I'm just duplicating it. And let me create an emissive material. So I'm going to right click, go to the material section, click on material. I'm going to name it cube emissive. I'm going to double click and I'm going to set up for the base color. I'm going to set up something like let's say bluish 
And the other thing is here, emissive cover. I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to create a parameter. So I'm holding one on my keyboard and then I'm going to multiply and I'm going to multiply the cover by the parameter and I'm going to put it into the emissive cover. I'm going to save and for my specular, I'm going to put zero because I don't want to have specular. I'm going to save again. And right now I'm going to apply this to my cube. And right now my cube is not emitting anything. But if I start tweaking up this value all the way to one, we can start that our cube right now starts to emit lightning. And if I move it over here, you can see that we have a little blue over here emitted from this cube. And if you want this to be a parameter outside of your material, right click, convert to parameter. And let's say the slider max up to 10, slider means zero. Let's say the group priority emission and set the priority of zero. Then save this, close it, rename this as MM for my master material. I'm gonna right click, create material instance, and I'm gonna name it MI for material instance cube emissive. All right, so this is an instance from the master material. Now I'm going to apply it over here. I'm going to double click and we have this emission slider that we can tweak and we can tweak it in runtime. We don't need to go back to this master material, change a value, save, etc. So this is how you can do it. And this emissive material is emitting lightning even if you don't have any lights in your scene. Let's say this is not visible. So let's make it invisible. And this is the only object that emits lights over here. And this is something pretty cool if you want to make different kind of emissive materials, maybe a little LCD display that emits a little bit of light, etc. You can change it over here. And if you want to change also the color as a parameter, go to your master material, select your color over here, right click, convert to parameter, emissive color and just put it under the group emission, set priority of one, click save. Then go back to your material instance, click on the emissive cover, and you can start tweaking up your cover in real time. So this is pretty handy to set up your parameters outside from your master material and tweak them in real time in your material instance. This is something that you should always do because it saves a lot of time, let's say, a little bit of orange. So this is how the emissive material works. And finally, if you want to create different type of shadows, right now we have this soft shadow. As I've showed you before, you can tweak up the source radius over here and the source radius will tell how the shadow will act. So the smaller the source radius, the harder the shadow will be. The higher the source radius, the softer the shadow will be. That is something that you should know. From the source radius, you can tweak up the shadow hardness and softness for each light. Another thing that I want to show you is right now the shadows itself here are pretty smooth, look pretty great. And this is because I'm using the ray tracing on the shadows. Okay. And here from advanced cast ray trace shadows, if I disable it, you're going to have different, a little bit different shadows. They're not looking too ugly, but if you're enable the ray tracing, your shadows will look a lot more realistic. All right. So this is something that I want to point out that the ray trace shadows are way, way better than the shadows casted without ray tracing. So the next topic that I want to touch is how you can use bake lightning and bake lightning is pretty commonly used in game development because it saves a lot of performance. For example, if you use all across your game, just real time lightning, it will cost you a lot of performance. So mixing bake lightning with real time lightning, it will work just perfect for your game. So right now I have this rec light, which is stationary. And I want to show you how first you can create a static bake lightning and what are the requirements for it. The static based lightning is pretty commonly used in mobile games if you don't want to have any real time lightning or maybe just one real time lightning and everything else could be static. And I'm just going to hide my tree over here and I'm just going to focus on this one. So we have a soft shadow and we have this night drawer and right now what this drawer has is UV channels just for the textures. So what you need to do is you need to go to your 3D model, double click on it, 
and right click here in the UVs, you can see that we have UV channel zero. So UV channel zero is getting the information for the texturing, for the texturing part of this 3D object. And we need one additional channel where we can bake the lightning. So what you need to do is here in the search, search for light, and here under generate light map UVs, check this, save it. And when you save it, you see that you have UV channel one. This UV channel one is generated automatically by Unreal Engine. And in the UV channel one, you have inside bake the light map. Keep in mind that you must not have overlapping UVs because if you have overlapping UVs, the light map won't work because this, for example, this UV, if it's overlapping with this one, they will get the same light information and it will be not accurate. So the first step is to prepare your 3D model to have this UV channel for light mapping. The static bake lightning is the best performing bake lightning that you can have and it is quite useful for mobile gaming. So it has the fully baked lightning and the fastest rendering. So let me switch to static over here. And right now nothing is happening. We still have our lightning dynamic. So it is still in real time. So what we need to do is go to build and click build lightning only. And now the lightning will start to build. And once it's finished, it will say that my forest, which is my tree, doesn't have the wrapping UVs. So as I told you, you need a second UV channel, but right now nothing is working. And this is because in Unreal Engine 5, by default, you are using Lumen. And right now I'm using Unreal Engine 5.3. If you are watching this somewhere in the future, it might not be the same case for you. But right now, Woman is not working with Bake Lightning. So what you need to do is you need to open your project settings go all the way down to rendering and you need to disable Lumen for your dynamic global illumination. So I'm going to click none and I'm going to click none for the reflection mode. Okay, so this is the bake lightning over here and it is pretty ugly right now. Now I will show you how you can tweak up and get a good shadows and lightning. The trick is as follows. You go here in the light and type light and here you need to check for light map density. And here, if your object is in green, it means that this object is getting enough texturing detail for the light map and the scale of the light map texture is perfect. How you can tweak this? Let me select this object and let me search for light. And here in the override light map resolution, right now is 64. Let me bump it all the way to 520. And if I deselect, you can see that it's red. It says too much resolution for this object, tweak it down, all right? 128, that's pretty good, but it's going to yellowish. So 64 is perfect resolution for this one. See our ground over here is blue. So it says that this is not enough resolution. Again, on the light, I'm just gonna boost up my resolution to 56, still not good. Then 24, this is the perfect resolution. And now I'm just going back to the lit and I'm going to rebake my lightning. Once your lightning is rebaked, you can see now that we have more resolution onto the ground and we have this soft lightning over here. Of course, it doesn't look perfect and you need to tweak all the parameters here in the lightning, in the shadow settings. So this is how you can achieve this lightning. And I'm going to show you a real example in a production game, how I use this light mapping. I'm just going to tell you the theory behind it. So this is a level that I've created for our game counter attack. And as you can see here, the shadows are looking pretty good. And how I done that? I've selected this piece, so the ground itself, and I set up the scale in light map to be three. It is the same as setting up this here, the override light map resolution. And the idea behind setting the scale of light map to be bigger, let me just open the light map. You can see that over here, we have this piece of light map. This sheet is for the entire map. And the idea is that our character, when you walk with your first person character, you can see these shadows pretty often and how I compensate. So I increase the shadow resolution on my floor because I want to have these nice shadows casted from the buildings and I compensate the resolution from the roofs. So if I select those roofs, you can see that in the roofs, my scale in light map is 0.2. So it is a balance between 
getting out the resolution from your roofs because when you are in FPS game, you won't see too much often here the roofs itself, but the very important thing is to have details on your ground. So giving one object a less resolution that won't be that visible and it won't matter too much to the game and giving this resolution to, to things that are very important is the key of balancing this light map resolution. And especially when you're making a mobile game, this is crucial in order for you to have good performance, wall draw calls and the scene itself to look pretty good. So it is the same in Unreal. If you're developing a mobile game, you need to set up per object how much resolution the baked light map should give to that object. For example, if I want this object to have less resolution, I'm just going to give it 32 and I'm going to compromise from resolution on this object and I'm going to give a lot more resolution to the ground object. So this is the basics of the baking, how you can use this baking tool in order for you to save a lot of performance. If you're developing a game for low end devices, mobile devices, or maybe you want to mix up the real time lightning with your bake lightning in order for you to boost performance and use that performance in other subject of your game like networking, programming, game features, etc. Another thing that I want to talk about is reflections and how you can capture them in Unreal Engine and what is the idea behind it and how you can create optimized reflections. So right now this sphere is reflecting only my lights over here because we have nothing over here to capture pretty much. So one way to do this is go here and search for reflections. And you have three types, box, sphere, and planar. Let me drag and drop box. And here you have boundaries of those boxes. So in those boundaries, you're going to capture everything and you're going to start reflecting it onto your surface, which has a reflective material. But right now, nothing is happening because we have only this dark scene with everything is gray. And here from the reflection source type, I set to capture the scene. Right now, as I'm capturing the scene, nothing is transitioning onto my ball. But you can go to specified cube map and you can use a cube map for reflections. I'm going to select this. And now my reflective ball over here is reflecting everything from this cube map. If we get out of the boundary box over here, if I move it over here, all the way over here, we are not reflecting anything. And this is the optimized way to reflect something. And I'm going to show you in real life example in a game in production, how in theory this is used. So this is the first method that you can use. And let me show you the real life example. Here I'm in Unity, but I'm just going to show you the concept. I have a sphere here, which is capturing my entire environment. And here we are capturing the houses, etc. And the sphere bounding box is capturing the entire level. So I have one reflection sphere for my entire level. And this reflection sphere is capturing everything. And this is the optimized way to fake reflections onto your weapons. And right now I just put this AK-47. And let me just turn off this. And if I move a little bit around it, you can see the house over here. And it is reflecting and this reflect information we are getting from this reflection prop over here so this is the way how you can fake reflections and still be in believable colors into your scene this is the very optimized way that you can use for triple a mobile games and it is not in real time of course you can select your prop to be real time over here in unity and the same goes for unreal engine if you capture the scene this will capture in real time but if you want to fake it and save up a lot of performance, this is the right way to do it. Define different zones and create different captures. So this is the first way. Another way is to add a skylight. So when I add a skylight over here, we have the same thing as the box capturing, but this is affecting the complete scene, the whole level. So if I turn on real time capture, we need also a sky atmosphere component to capture everything. This is the real time capturing and giving the reflections. In order to have reflections, you need to have something in the environment so this sphere can reflect to. But if I turn this off and let's say we specified the cube map, I can specify this one, for example, and this is affecting the entire scene, right? Everything that has a little reflection will start reflecting. My floor also has reflections, but if we zoom over here, we see that the floor here is gray. What you can do over here is you can open the skylight and go into advanced 
and turn off the lower hemisphere. And now you will get also the ground reflection. So this is another method if you are making a PC game, a AAA game, you can use the skylight to fake reflection with cube map or just capture the entire scene and just feed your game with real-time reflection data. All right, so for the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I lit up this scene, how I have this pretty nice lightning and the indirect lightning is just filling up my cave exit, just the right amount. Also, I have those nice gold rays over here that are litting up Ray and R2D2. So let's break this down and let me show you how I set up the scene. So if I turn off the lightning, you can see here that I have an emissive material just for the lightsaber and it is emitting a little bit of bluish. If you want to create a little bit more halo around this, what you need to do is you need to add a point light and you need to set up this point light. Let's say, let's set up a bluish color over here. Let's tune down the intensity to one, maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.2. And let's tweak up the source radius. And now you can see that we have this nice blue effect that is having this emission channel over here into the material but we are also emitting a little bit of light through this point light all right so this is how you can create your emissive channel and how you can add an extra depth to your emissive material over here the flickering we don't have enough resolution for the shadow but you can fix that so i'm going to delete this one and let's start by breaking down everything first I'm having a directional light. So my directional light is lighting up the scene through this little gap over here where the exit of our cave is. And we are just lighting up our character, which is Ray, and a little bit of R2D2, just his bottom over here, right? And this is ideally as an art direction that I want those things to be on a focus, all right? So in my directional light, what I set up is I have intensity of 8, I have a little bit of big source angle, 3.5. Let me show you how this affects the scene. See the shadows? The bigger the source angle, a little bit softer shadows we have over here. So 3.5 working great for me. For the source soft angle, I've put 0 0.12. Moving further, this indirect lightning intensity, which is 2.5, if I boost it up to 6 to 7, you're going to see how we are lighting up a little bit inside of the cave, but when we apply later on the post process, 2.5 will be okay. Let me put 20, and when you put 20, you can see that we are lighting up a little bit more of these indirect places that are lit up from the sunlight. If we put 40, just for the sake of it, to see how it works, see how we are filling it up. But I'm going to put 2.5 as this is working with my post process. For the volumetric scattering, we're going to go back to this when I enable the fog. And the other thing that I have in my directional light is my white shafts. Those white shafts are needed in order for you to create gold rays. So I enable the light shaft over here and the light shaft bloom. And I have occlusion of 0 0.3. All right, so the next step, let me enable the post process. When I enable the post process, you can see that our scene is lighting up and I have few settings over here. Let me show you. So when you go into your exposure, right now I didn't set up the min and the max EV value over here, but I've set up the metering modes to manual. I've set up the exposure compensation to 15. So from here, you can lit up your scene a little bit more. So let's say 18, 16, let's say five. So from here, you can control how your scene is letting up, how much exposure you're going to have. So 15.5 is good for me. And you need also to apply the physical camera exposure because if it's false, it will start burning out your scene and it will not have this accuracy in the color and lighting. So I have those settings. And the next thing that I have is, as I've mentioned before, you need to set up the infinite extent unbound because this will work for the complete scene. So this is the setup for my post process. All right, so far so good. What else I have? I have volumetric clouds, which are working outside and they're just adding a little bit of cloud functionality to my whole sky. I have skylight. So when you turn it on, I have a little bit of skylight. Then I have sky atmosphere. I didn't touch the settings over here. Everything is by default. Then I added the sky atmosphere. Again, the sky atmosphere is by default. And you can see that we have over here a little bit colors from the sky atmosphere. 
a little bit bluish in our rocks because we are letting up from this side, from the left side. And right now our scene is looking good, but still not fantastic. I don't like the change of colors between those and those rocks. And that's why I added an HDR backdrop. When I turn it on, you can see that this HDR is fixing the colors over here. And for this HDR backdrop, I use just the storm template and the intensity of one. But by using the HDR, I'm fixing this area of my rocks to be the same as this one, not to have this big change in colors. And that looks pretty good to me. And the final sauce is to use exponential height fog. When I turn the fog, I have those pretty nice gold rays. And let me show you the settings for the exponential height fog. The HDR backdrop doesn't have any specific settings. So here I have a fog density of 0.05. If I tune this up to, let's say, 1, you can see how my gold rays are start to getting a little bit dense at the start of the gold rays. And if you want this kind of effect, let's say it's a desert outside and the sun is burning too much, you can tune up the fog density maybe 1, 2, of course, you can do that. But I'm going to use 0.5 for me, just to have this little subtle effect of the gold rays. Then, moving further, I have enabled the volumetric fog. This is pretty important. You need to enable the volumetric fog. If you don't enable it, you're going to have this blue haze over here, which is not natural. And if I enable it, I have everything looking good and I have those pretty nice gold rays. For the scattering distribution, let me show you what this does. If I go all the way to zero, it will scatter around even. So from the start to the end of this gold ray. But when I start bumping it up, you can see that we are bumping up the start point of the gold rays and the end point is fading out. And this is the effect that you want. So I'm going to put 0.84, let's say, 0.74 so we can have this pretty nice effect and the idea of this shot is to have those two characters as a pinpoint so when a person look at this shot it will immediately see the characters and know that the focus of the eye should be going there and those are pretty much the settings that I use for this scene it is pretty straightforward and see how easy it is to set up something looking as good as this one if you know the basics of lightning and one more advice before I wrap this up, when you're creating a light scene, let's say there is a dark scene and you need to let it up for different games, what you need to do is you need to collect a lot of references and start working with references. I did this lightning composition by using references from Google and Pinterest. So I highly recommend to use photography as a reference for your lightning. And before I end up this video, I want to let you know that I've created a Blueprints Masterclass for Unreal Engine 5. It is available right now on Udemy. So if you want to expand your knowledge and not just only create art pieces in Unreal Engine 5, but create some characters, create some game logic, my course is the perfect solution from beginners to intermediate Unreal Engine 5 users. The course itself is 15 hours long and it has all the foundation that you need to kickstart your blueprint knowledge in Unreal Engine 5. So if you want to keep evolving yourself beyond just creating art in Unreal Engine 5, enroll now. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to support me and get access to all my files, also to the auto material that I've created previously, join my Patreon page for $4.99 and with your pledge, you're supporting me to keep creating amazing videos like this. Each one of you can make a big difference by supporting my channel so I can keep making those videos. Thank you guys for watching this video. Happy game development. I'm out.